Hello. Welcome to Inside NRPS. My name is Kathleen Willis, Superintendent of Schools for North Reading Public Schools. And today joining me is Dr. Patrick Daly, Director of Academic Services. And we're here today to share with you um, what NRPS 2016 means for the North Reading Public Schools. This is a plan that we refer to that defines um, how we're going to provide a continuous improvement plan for student achievement in the North Reading Public School system. So we're going to talk a little bit today about how this came to be, um, the kind of work that we went through with the Administrative Council to define this action plan, and then what are some of our next steps that we're going to focus on this year and the two years remaining on the plan. So let's get started. Um, when I entered the North Reading Public School District in July of 2010, um, I found it to be very important to conduct an entry plan. And during that entry plan process, I interviewed um, representatives from all of the stakeholders here in North Reading. And I discovered all of the wonderful things that people had to say about the North Reading Public School District. I discovered all of the work that was already taking place and I discovered some of the hopes and dreams that these stakeholders had for the children moving through the school system. So after I collected all of that information I discovered that this school district was already performing at very high levels. So in order to come up with a plan for continuous improvement, we needed to be very strategic about how we um, proceed with that process. So as I was meeting with the Administrative Council, it became clear to us that we wanted to engage in some professional research and um, readings around continuous strategic improvement. And we came across a book entitled Strategy in Action, How School Systems Can Support Powerful Learning and Teaching by Rachel Curtis and Elizabeth City. It just so happened that many school districts across the state during that particular school year were engaged in this professional book group discussion, so it was timely that we all participated um, in this book discussion in North Reading. So the Administrative Council, including Dr. Daly, um, engaged in reading the book and really culling from that book all of the strategies that we could use to develop a continuous improvement plan. So just what is a strategy? Um, we were going through the first chapter and we came up a across a quote by Stacy Childress, who is a strategy scholar and teacher. Strategy is a set of actions an organization chooses to pursue in order to achieve its objectives. These deliberate actions are puzzle pieces that fit together to create a clear picture of how people, activities, and resources of an organization can work effectively to accomplish a collective purpose. Um, being strategic is considered to be hard for school systems because most systems pursue more initiatives than any organization can ever hope to implement well. We tend to layer more and more initiatives on top of one another without taking anything, anything away. So we found that it was very important that we be, be very strategic about how we were going to proceed. And it was important to understand how um, strategic planning is very different from strategic development. So on this slide you can see two lists that compare strategic planning to effective strategy development. And very quickly, if we were involved in traditional strategic planning, it focuses on the status quo. What's currently in place and how are we going to continue doing what we're doing? As opposed to um, being innovative in our approach, taking a look at what we're currently doing, examining why we're doing it, and maybe doing something different because doing something different will get us to where we want to go. With strategic planning, there's an emphasis on the external audience. Whereas with strate strategy development, we're focusing on the inside of the organization. With strategic planning, there, it's broad and it's incremental. With, strate with strategy development, we go very deep and we're very intentional about those strategies on which we focus because we're focusing on very few. With strategic planning, the work is discreet and easy to fit into what we're already doing as opposed to um, a, a plan that's interdependent. Those strategies rely on one another to be successful and it demands change. 
Strategic planning is more like a to-do list. How are we going to accomplish all we need to do in a short amount of time? And it's static. Whereas with strategy development, we are coming up with new ways of thinking and being to accomplish the work that we identify. It's dynamic. The work is never done. It's something that we revisit all the time and we change as we move forward, depending upon what was accomplished and what we need to do differently. So when we think about the strategy that um, is involved with planning in education, we need to define those few high leverage ways to improve instruction and student learning. And we need to remember to always focus on the instructional core. Now just what is the instructional core? This slide shows us that it represents the interaction of teachers and students in the presence of content. And each point of this triangle is critical. It is that interaction between the three that produces high levels of learning. So in order to make strategic improvements, we need to focus on all three points simultaneously. We can't just focus on one and expect any lasting impact to take place. Too much research exists out there that substantiates the that focusing on one of the three is ineffective. We must be strategic by focusing on all three. So part of the work that we engaged in was to define what our vision and our mission is to drive the work of this continuous improvement plan. And as we researched what already existed within the district, we discovered that there was not a vision that had been articulated. We did have a mission and it was quite good, but we decided that we needed to define the vision because it tells us where we want to be as an organization. We, need, we knew that as we developed this vision, we needed to be bold, to be audacious, as we said. We wanted it to be short and easy to remember, but complex and challenging in its nature. Each word of this vision is intentional and far-reaching. And the words within the um, vision really elicit conversation. What does it mean for our school? What does it mean for each classroom? So after going through an exercise with the administrators and the teachers across the district, we arrived at the vision for the North Reading Public Schools as the North Reading Public Schools prepare all students to be productive citizens who thrive in the 21st century. So as I said, the school district did already have a mission and it was quite good. The mission defines how we are going to achieve that vision. So after again going through a process with the administrative council and the teachers, we arrived at the mission that you can see on the screen. And this mission embodies not only um, the direction in which we'll take to achieve the vision, but it also embodies the core values of excellence, service, and lifelong learning. So then once we had our vision and we had our a mission, we needed to take a look at all of the initiatives that were currently in, taking place within the school district. So we brainstormed all of those initiatives and we discovered that there were 53 initiatives already taking place. As I had mentioned, every time we were told that we needed to add something else to our repertoire, um, we would layer it on top of what was already taking place. So we knew that we really needed to take a look at those initiatives and define broad categories by grouping those initiatives together. And then by taking a look at those broad categories, we again narrowed our focus to define what are those major strategy areas that provide the most leverage for improving student achievement. Once we identified those strategy areas, then we created a theory of action, strategic objectives, and initiatives that followed those objectives. The next step in the process was to identify what are the goals that we want to achieve in order to move this continuous improvement plan forward. So we defined eight broad goals for the school district. And then we linked each of these goals to the new educator evaluation plan for teachers and administrators in the district. I'm pleased to share with you now that those three major strategy areas are teaching and learning, student services, and technology integration. Under each of, of these three major strategy areas are objectives that define the focus for our work. 
And then under each objective, our strategic initiative that constitute an action plan for each of the five years of NRPS 2016. So on this slide, you can see under teaching and learning, there are three objectives. And those objectives focus on curriculum alignment, hiring and retaining highly qualified staff, and using data to improve student learning outcomes. On the next slide, you can see the three objectives for the student support services. And they really focus on in-district programming that meet the needs of our students, designing a professional development system that supports the implementation of programs to meet the needs of all students in our school district, and to create a consistent instructional process that focuses on student learning and provides support to those students who need more than what's provided in the regular classroom. And that third major strategy area under technology integration, there are three objectives that focus on, again, hiring and retaining highly qualified technology staff, developing a shared technology vision for the school district, and enhancing the infrastructure that support the, the system within the district so that we can continue to provide those innovative technologies to our students as a learning tool. So this is the third year of this five-year strategic improvement plan. And at this point, I'd like Dr. Patrick Daly, our Director of Academic Services, to describe for you what will be taking place in this third year of the action plan. Great, so we've got several initiatives going on um, <clears throat> right now in the areas of teaching and learning. And educator evaluation is the first one on our list here. And what educator evaluation, as you may be aware, is a part of the state uh, initiative. There is requirements from the state that every district adopt and, uh, and update their educator evaluation system in many different ways. So this is going on across the state, but it's also a, a focus here. We know, as you said, mm -hmm. uh, teachers and students and the presence of content is our instructional core. A lot of all the research shows that there's no greater effect on, on a student than a good teacher. Mm -hmm. And so this is, a, this is a system about growth. This is a system about our, our already uh, very proficient educators getting the feedback in a timely and in a, in a way that they can uh, make good decisions and reflect to improve their teaching and their instruction. So we're, we're putting a lot of effort into that. We have our essential standards, which are, uh, we've heard them referred to as power standards. These are the state uh, frameworks, which have standards for what students should be what essentially what students should know and be able to do. Mm -hmm. And these are what our educators have said, out of all those standards, if we had to prioritize, if there was something that was at the top of the umbrella and then all these other standards fell under them. So those are the essential standards that um, our educators have been working on. And we've developed ways of measuring our students learning what we're hoping that they're learning. Mm -hmm. So these are when we talk about assessments, tests, quizzes, portfolios, oral presentations, all the different ways that students are able to show that they're working towards those learning objectives of those essential standards. Uh, a great way to measure this is what's called the common assessment. So we've been looking at those. And in, in addition to just an individual teacher assessing her students, this is a way that all students in second grade are all having a similar assessment so that all the students are having the same opportunities and that all the educators are able to see did all second grade students meet mm -hmm. the, uh, the benchmark that, we're, that we've set up with our essential standards at that point in the year? So the development of common assessments has been a major work that we've been doing for several years, and it's a huge focus this year for us. Understanding by design, that is a, uh, a way of planning our curriculum. So it's really understanding from the design standpoint We've probably heard of uh, backwards design, starting with the end in mind, starting with the standard in mind, and then working backwards from there to really think about how we plan our, our whole courses, our units, our lessons, and even the individual tasks and performance tasks. So right down to that level, starting with the big picture from the micro, uh, from the macro, and then working to the mm -hmm. micro. So we're working on some professional development around uh, that. A lot of the templates that we're using for our, our unit and lesson design is in the Understanding by Design template. Wiggins and McTie mm -hmm. um, are, the, are the authors of that thinking in curriculum design. And then our data team and data analysis, this has been ongoing. Uh, we're collecting all this data from all the assessments that we're giving. MCAS is one set of assessments, local assessments that we develop, and all other kinds of data that we have in the district about graduation rates and, and population and, and 
all different uh, pieces of data. We've really done a lot of training just about um, how we're using data to make informed decisions and the way we talk about data, even the common language of how we use data. So we've done a lot of training with our curriculum leaders and with our educators to use those uh, tools and also um, the analysis itself. There's a system from the Department of Education, now it's called the Edwin Teaching and Learning System, where we have access to a lot of data. We can go visual, make charts, graphs, share that data with with uh, all stakeholders. So that's been a big focus of teaching and learning. Another area that we've been looking at is technology integration. So we've looked at the leadership and the support staff. We've been looking at part of my role in this uh, position. I'm in charge of curriculum. I'm in charge of technology and many other things. And as this expands and blossoms, we're really looking at hopefully expanding some of the leadership so that we can have a director of digital learning that can really oversee everything from the way our technology functions in the schools to how it, uh, our courses for technology and really digital learning and digital literacy in the 21st century. Um, we're looking at our library media model because if, if you go into the library today, you'll see it's not the library that we hear from years ago. I was joking with our head librarian, Kim Smith. There's a commercial on right now with that stereotypical librarian that, shh, you know, no talking. You know, Kim has a sign in her library that says, interrupt me. I mean, this is what the 21st mm -hmm. century library is about. It's about, th there's really a blending of media, multimedia technology. And I see our, our librarians and our digital learning specialists working together to help all teachers and students um, with technology and with digital literacy, you know, using our databases to do research and also how to use technology to instruct or, or present your ideas. So there's really a, a merge there. So we're looking at K-12, to rethinking our library media model. Um, internet safety is, just like in our school mission, safety is, is first and foremost. And we all know uh, the dangers of, of the internet and also the, the benefits. So we want to make sure our students know everything about how to be safe online with predators and all that, but also just the digital footprint you create. If you're posting a picture of yourself in eighth grade, that may come back to haunt you when you apply for a job 10 years later. So we want to be very clear about uh, what we're doing. And it, there's a responsibility about internet safety in, in, in terms of you know protecting ourselves and projecting ourselves. I think both are very important. But also information literacy. I think we could go, we could have a whole show just on this, but what's happening now with uh, the amount of information that's out there just because of the internet, it's changing the way students learn and it's changing, changing the way that teachers teach. Uh, for a teacher to stand at the front of the room and be the, what they call the sage on the stage, pro providing the students with the knowledge, that's really shifted. With the internet, the students are able to access all that knowledge, and it's really about the, the teacher becoming what they call the guide on the side, helping the students access that knowledge. What we need to be teaching our students is not only the knowledge that's out there, but how to access it, how to look up something on a website and know that that information is valid and reliable. Those are skills that we need to teach K-12. to So we're developing, uh, with our digital learning specialists, a curriculum, K-12, to that will support everything we're doing in the classroom to also reinforce these uh, information literacy, digital mm -hmm. literacy skills. Large capital plan, this is an ongoing process where we've uh, gone to ask for improvements. In the past, it was really about desktop computers. That was sort of the, the big purchase that mm -hmm. we're looking at. There's so many pieces to large capital now. It could be mobile devices like iPads. It could be a, a management system with all these assessments we're talking about, trying to track those mm -hmm. and go visual with those. Um, it's also the infrastructure because now, as we know, there's an expectation of wireless in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Students have cell phones and, and tablets in their pockets that are as powerful as the computers were five, ten years ago. So we need a wireless system that's able to accommodate those. So there's many pieces to it, and large cap is, is something we're going to be looking at for that. Uh, repurposing, as you know, with our new bu building project, middle school, high school coming online, there will be some equipment that um, can have a purpose in our other schools. So we're, we're really putting a lot of focus on uh, figuring out what those devices, whether they be computers or even uh, smart boards, things like that that could serve a purpose in other buildings. 
and professional development, ongoing professional development. We have, uh, I'm proud to say, 100% of our teachers have participated in some kind of technology professional mm -hmm. development. We've had some great teachers in-house, our digital learning specialists, Joanne Coughlin and Hen Helen Kelly, and also uh, you know, Amy St. Arnaud and uh, Jennifer Posterino and uh, Gretchen Shaw and some others that have done smart boards and Google websites and some other wonderful presentations. Um, uh, Chris Roof doing iPads, and it, it's Peter been really Kane. wonderful. Peter Kane. Kane, so many of our, our I, I know I'll leave somebody out, but so many, what I'm trying to get a point here is so many of our teachers in-house mm -hmm. have been able to provide trainings for our teachers. And then our teachers are also going to outside places as well, but we've really been developing a capacity to share best practices and technology within the district. And we had some great uh, programs over the summer and throughout the school year for our for our educators. One of our goals with our digital learning specialists is to offer some nights at the schools for parents and community as well. So some technology nights at the schools. Let's look at the technology we're building. We're developing a, a model classroom at the high school with some of those technologies that will be in the new building. And so we're hoping to have some nights where you know parents can come in and also see what are some of these devices and things we're using. So those are things that are in the works as part of our plan this year. Student service is not something that I'm specifically uh, in charge of my position. Dr. Valerie Flynn is in charge of that, but I can not speak to these mm -hmm. as well. Um, entrance and exit criteria for programs and for really defining the programs and services we offer our students and being really uh, well-defined entrance and exit criteria is, is a goal for this year. Um, trying to have an in-district social, emotional, and behavior program. That's something we definitely have a, a need for, for addressing social and emotional behavior, and we want to have a program in North Reading Public Schools that can uh, meet the needs of our students. And I'd just like to add yeah. that last year we engaged um, the Walker Group That's to right. do an outside evaluation of our special education programs mm -hmm. and services. And one of the outcomes of that evaluation uh, suggested that we examine our current practices around mm -hmm. providing um, a program to meet the needs of students in district as opposed to those that are already placed in, in outside placements outside of the district. So this will be the next venue where we explore establishing an in-district program to meet the needs of those students. Absolutely. So taking the information from that study and now what's the next step? What's the That's next a step? major piece of this year. The, the retail implementation plan, this is rethinking English teaching for English language learner students. Mm -hmm. And so this is a major initiative across uh, the state is actually in compliance with a federal piece. Um, in, in North Reading, we do have a very low incidence of, of uh, students who are, whose first language is not English. But there are some students, mm -hmm. and we do have a plan in place. Uh, and so that's something we're looking at this year. We're in a cohort that doesn't actually have to make some decisions until later this year for next year. But it's a definitely a goal for this year to get that plan in place so mm -hmm. that we're well prepared for next year. Uh, Co-teaching has been uh, something we've been doing in this district for many years, but we really wanted to stop a couple years ago and, and, and take and just say, what, how do we define co-teaching? Do we all look at it the same way? Um, what are the models that are working? What's the success? And co-teaching is really about the relationships between the teachers, and we've spent a lot of time uh, running some workshops with Seaside Consultants, working with our mm -hmm. co-teachers in the district. That will continue this year, and we've done a lot of work um, specifically at the high school this year uh, has even intensified that beyond the course that we're offering. They're going to do specific PD just for those teachers. So that, I'm very excited about that. And then a district-wide tiered intervention model. We've heard a lot about uh, response to intervention or RTI. Mm -hmm. You may have heard about uh, different schools have tried it and are implementing it in slightly different ways. So part of what we're looking at is a Massachusetts system called MTSS. Uh, this is one of the goals that we're looking at this year across the district is when we have an intervention to be made, let's say we get assessment data showing that a lot of students need help with fractions or something like that. How do we respond as a district? And is it the same in each of the three elementary schools? What does it look like at the middle school? What does it look like at the high school? Trying to all uh, respond in the same way is part of a much bigger system, which is what MTSS looks at. And that, that looks at everything from the funding for these programs to uh, the curriculum that's available, the resources that are available, the staffing. So it's a part of a big picture that we're looking at there. So that's what uh, the tiered intervention model looks like for that. Thank you, Patrick. Welcome. As with any plan, it's very important to evaluate your effectiveness. Otherwise, you keep doing what you've always done. Absolutely. So at our administrative retreat that's held every summer for two days in July, mm -hmm. a, a large part of what we do is to evaluate the plan, 
initiative by initiative, objective by objective, mm -hmm. and determine what did we accomplish and to what degree did we accomplish it, and how does that affect the plan for the next year. So this past summer, uh, on July 1st and 2nd, the whole leadership team, including our assistant principals and our assistant director of uh, pupil personnel services, spent a good part of the time taking a look at what's been accomplished the first two years of implementing this plan. Um, and we looked at it in depth. And the metrics that we use to measure student performance um, are the results of the MCAS test. In particular, we look at the student growth percentiles and the composite performance index. So we took a look at what we accomplished and we assessed where we were at the end of last year. We made adjustments to where we want to be this year. We redefined those initiatives that we want to accomplish, and Patrick just shared those with you. And then we readjusted the initiatives under each of the objectives and strategy areas for the last two years of the improvement plan. So some of the next steps that we'll take as we move forward for this school year is to analyze the 2013 MCAS results that will be released to the public this week. Then we'll take a look at the targets for improvement that are included at the back of NRPS 2016 for each of the individual schools as well as the subgroups. And we'll figure out what targets did we achieve and what do we need to adjust because we didn't quite make those targets, so we need to increase our efforts on some of the initiatives that we have planned. Then we'll move forward, as we've already started to do, with, um, with implementing the initiatives for this school year. And then we'll take a look at those initiatives that we've identified for the 2014-15 school year and analyze those um, as to how they have an impact for the next budget development process, which is FY15 budget. And then we'll include those initiatives when we make our presentation to the school committee. And as we do with every year for this plan, we'll evaluate, revise, and then implement. Mm -hmm. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an insight as to what NRPS 2016 includes and how it's driving the work that's taking place within the district. And where can they find this plan, Dr. Daly? Right on our school district website, under uh, on the right-hand column, you can see that the NRPS 2016 document is available and any updates and revisions as they come available, we will be uh, publishing them there as well. And you can subscribe to that at the bottom of the website. If there's updates that are sent, you can get those as well. But just check it on the district website. We'll make it very obvious so that you can, uh, as you're watching this video, you can be following along with the plan and, and hopefully what we described today will help uh, clarify some questions you may have about it. Right, thank you. The plan will be presented to the North Reading School Committee on Monday, September 23rd at their regular school committee meeting. And following that presentation, the revised plan will be uploaded to the district website. So that concludes our discussion with you today. I'd like to end with a quote again. Um, and this is a quote uh, that's known as a Chinese proverb. And it's as follows. If you are planning for a year, sow rice. If you are planning for a decade, plant trees. If you are planning for a lifetime, educate people. Thank you and good night.